right guys, today we are going over my budget bump helmet setup. This isn't as budget as you can get, but it's pretty close. Now bear with me with my filming setup right now, little plastic table, gun safe behind me. <sighs> We're working through some things and I'm gonna get a little YouTube studio better suited for this type of filming. But this is my current setup. The base of this helmet is a Team Windy Xfil LTP bump. Not a carbon, just a regular bump. Uh, I have, don't have any uh, affiliation with Team Windy. I have not used anything other than Team Windy. Uh, I like the BOA closure system and the padding is nice. Uh, other than that, I've used their ballistic helmets in the past and I've used other bumps, size one, size two, this is size two, I have a huge head. I like it, it's light, it's comfortable. I barely have to use the BOA system. And if I do, it's because I've been wearing this on my head for four or five hours or something. Hunting at night, blah, blah, blah. It, I barely have to use it. It's comfortable enough as is. The helmet itself is the second most expensive part of this. It's about a $300 piece. You could probably put together a budget setup less than $300, but I wouldn't do that because you're going to be running a bike helmet and a strap-on NVG mount. And it's going to be chaotic, but if you want to see something like that, I'll link it down below. The most expensive part of this helmet is going to be where my night vision attaches to my helmet. This is the Wilcox G24. Uh, it's black. I know I kind of have a tan multicam theme going on, but I have a black one. It's unfortunate. Someone wants to trade me for a tan anodized or whatever, shoot me a DM on Instagram. But Wilcox G24, I did not skimp out on that piece. You can get the Norodos mount. You can get a Photonis mount. I don't care. You can get these used for like 300 bucks. I'm not skimping on what attaches my night vision to my head because I do not want two to $15,000 worth of night vision or thermals or combined falling off my head because my mount sucks. So take that as you will. I'm using a Wilcox G24. Next, we're gonna go to lighting. Lighting, I have a Princeton Tech, um, whatever, I'll put it right here. Uh, this will be linked below. Most of this will be linked below, guys, if you're interested in any of these things. This is a little Princeton Tech light. Um, forgot to mention, this is the bump helmet with the 2.0 uh, rails. If I had the 3.0 rails, I wouldn't have to attach my light like this. So this light, I literally just put the flat piece on for like molly. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. And then I put, you know, just hook Velcro on the back and that's how we're attaching this. It works, can it fall off? Will I maybe lose my $40 light? Yes, it works for now. If I had a typical, not typical, the 3.0 rail that has the small Picatinny piece out front right here, I would just be able to use the Picatinny mount and put it there, but I don't have that. I'm working with what I have. All right, on the other side, this is an Echo Arms mount with a KE1C, uh, not a vampire head. I'm looking for one. Uh, it's going to run me about 150 bucks, I think, just to do the tan, tan, tan. This is just off of one of my guns to show y'all. This isn't always on here. Um, it doesn't move. I can't go up and down. It's just straight up Velcroed onto the flag portion like the other side. I kind of want to do the SNS precision that moves up and down, but you add things that move, they're more likely to break. Uh, so I don't know. I might just stick with this for now. I have the tan little clicky clap clicky cap back here that's got holes in it so I will be adding some sort of you know split ring that I can dummy cord this in case for whatever reason it decides to fall off um, if the little light falls off I don't care it's like 40 bucks this is like a couple hundred dollars setup right here uh, it's definitely not needed if you want to you can put the Picatinny rail on the side of the 2.0 rails and run like an enforce light or a pistol light or anything like that anything you have around that'll work just fine um, to the back this is a knockoff Team VC Mohawk. Um, I had the real Mohawk one time, and I've had this one. This one is definitely lesser quality. Uh, it didn't come with counterweights. It just kind of came with the portion to put your extra batteries in and itself, pretty much. And it, it works. Okay, I, it, it works. It'll be linked down below. It is a Crydex brand. Uh, just from Amazon. It's like 20 bucks and I don't need something that's 80 to a hundred dollars to just hold batteries on the back of my head that has some bungee cord and some extra, you know, hook Velcro to it. Uh, take that as you will. If you want to spend 80 bucks, I don't care. Uh, oh, one thing, this is a white light. You press and hold for white. 
and then we'll pick it up. Maybe not. Is it on? Yeah. And it's IR on the other setting. I probably should have went with red instead of white since I already have a white light. And this will be white IR once I get the vampire head. That being said, I just wanted to go back over that in case anybody was wondering. But I just have a couple patches, Triarch, a little reflective IR, and then an IR flag. For 20 bucks, it works. It does the job. You know, like I said, this is budget. You know, if I want to be all tactical and have all the name brand stuff, I can do that if I want to. So, we're moving on to the more controversial pieces, which is going to be the Ear Pro. I say controversial just because I kind of don't like them. I'm going to be selling them, but I wanted to do this video with them before I sold them so that y'all could understand why they're gone and why I'm going to upgrade, probably to some Contact 3s or something. So, these are the Howard Light Impact Sports on the Unity 2.0s. Listen. They work, they do the job. But whenever you are wearing them, let me see if I can, whenever you are wearing them, that might not come through, maybe it will, but the wire extends out of this plastic piece. Now, if I had the 3.0 rails, that would put where I could attach this from the bottom side of this big slot to the top. I'll uh, put a picture up of the 3.0 rails and you'll see, I'll put an arrow to it. That's what I'm talking about. They would work just fine if I had the 3.0 rails. <sighs> Unfortunately, I don't, like I said earlier about the light. So I'm gonna toss this on real quick and I'm gonna show y'all. The 2.0 adapters, they work, they're all right, but it's constant pressure. There's no in-between and it's kind of a pain to get them down and then in the right spot to get a good like suction clamp seal whatever you want to call it and then in order for it to fit right on my head i have both of the little metal wire pieces coming down and literally stabbing me in the cheek and it doesn't work it is uncomfortable i ran these trying to do like some night shooting the other day and i mean they work for carrying protection but literally if I smile and my cheeks raise, I'm getting stabbed by the wires and I don't know. I don't like it. Do they work? Yes. Do I like it? No. I'm going to go to the 3M Peltor adapters specifically for this helmet with more than likely contact threes so that I can just pop them whenever I need to and I can set them out a little bit. I can still hear, still hear comms if I need to. I don't have a reason for comms right now, but if I do, I'll still be able to hear them and then I can just easily move them back. But right now it's just constant pressure and it's not the easiest to rotate in and out. You know, the 2.0 was developed like that for a reason because um, breachers and things like that were getting their ear pro blown off because the, the little snap in of the others wasn't strong enough. So that's why these were developed. But that being said, I'm not breaching anything. I'm not exploding anything. So I don't need that. So like this, this little setup right here ran me like $110 or $120 in tax swap or something. Some dude was just selling it. Didn't work for him. Doesn't work for me. I'll pass it on to the next guy and see if it works for him. Here's the, I just routed the cable to it underneath these little, little one tie things underneath back here. And it is just, just long enough for it to go down on both sides just fine and go up just enough. This is my current night vision setup. This is just a Wilcox J-Arm and the PVS-14. This is technically an AGM PVS-14 housing with a Gen 3 ITT something another inside of it. Uh, I paid my boy over at Discreet Ventures to uh, throw this together for me. He made it work. And um, I'll be selling this unit and upgrading. This is just a Gen 3 you know, green phosphor tube. Uh, I'll be upgrading eventually, going to some duels, probably a 1431 Gen 2 with whatever tubes I can get in there for a decent price. But PBS 14 for now works. So, you know, use what you can, train with it, go from there. Um, I'm gonna try to add up the full cost of this helmet. Put that right here. This is how much the helmet cost. Everything as is. Most of it will be linked down below. This is what I use guys. Currently, I'm going to experiment with some other helmets. I'm gonna get a helmet from Ace Link Armor. I'm going to 
try and get a what is it? A ops core or something another something another. And go from there. But here's here's my setup, my guys. And if I run these down, I don't even have to clip. These provide enough stability without the thing in the back and the chin strap that I can wear this with one PBS 14 just fine. And I could I can wear this for hours and hours and hours. Now if I'm running a dual setup then I will more than likely need to clasp this in, you know, click this together. But I don't necessarily need to run the BOA system yet until my, you know, I start to get maybe a pressure point on the front or something like that. And where's my button? There you go, guys. The budget bump helmet setup is over. Here you go. You know, showed y'all the total of the helmet build right here. This is pretty cheap. You can do more expensive if you want to. You can do less expensive. Uh, this is a nice medium somewhere in there, you know, some name brand pieces, some kind of offish, cheaper brand pieces, and you get everything. You get extra lighting, you get a really good mount, really good suspension system, comfortable helmet, you get hearing protection, you get a counterweight. Uh, this is really everything you need in a helmet setup, minus comms, but I we don't really run comms whenever we're pig hunting, so, you know, until I get a ballistic helmet, then I put something on that's worthy of communications then yeah don't need it right now but budget helmet setup y'all be sure to subscribe everything will be linked down below appreciate it guys and i'm out thanks for watching peace